Hi, this is Larry London. Welcome to Border Crossings. Uh, today we are joined by a singer-songwriter who's been putting out new music for the uh, past few months. Shaylin is at home, and I'm not sure exactly where you're calling home these days because you have lived in so many different places. Welcome to The Voice of America and to Border Crossings. Great to have you on. Thank you. I am currently in Nashville, so here we are. That's the latest destination, Nashville. That's the latest. I feel like I've been, yeah, I've, I feel like, and I'm going to New York today, so I'm like, I'm all over the place right now. And you grew up in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yes, sir. I was born Chattanooga, raised Dallas, so I claim both because I was there like probably till six or seven, uh, so both are home for me. Mm -hmm. And you were singing in church. I guess it was uh, religious gospel music that kind of started you off? Honestly, I think I was singing in the womb because I truly had no desire to do anything else except for like sit there, eat cookies and like make noises when I was like super, super young. And then, yeah, I started, I remember sitting in church thinking like, wow, this is amazing. And then I had my first church solo ever called Bringing in the Sheaves. I got to sing for Offering. And I just remember in that moment, like I was making eye connection with everyone. I think I was six, six or seven. And I just remember having this feeling that was like, I don't know what this is, but it's a high that I want to know for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then after that, it was off to the freaking races. <laughs> you remember when you started writing your own music at what age? So it's so funny. I, my very first song, like to sit down on the piano, it's called, where do we go from here? And I think I was nine and I, obviously it wasn't very good. But I just remember also thinking like I had all these emotions inside what like at nine years old. I'm like, I don't know about heartbreak. I don't know about love. Um, but I just had these emotions. I was like, I need to get them out. I need to get them out. And that's how I started super, super young. And then after that, like it progressed really. And I really honed it in like when I was about 20 ish. And then it clicked of like, oh, this is how you really write a song. I studied everybody and anybody. And that's how like the progression over the last couple of years, I'm thankful for the life experiences, all the things. Cause it's just, uh, I, that's how I get everything out. It's like my own form of therapy. It's freaking great. Mm -hmm. And so why did you pick music as a career? Why, why did you decide to become a singer songwriter? You know, it's one of, you know, when you get asked when you're little, like, what do you want to be? And my, my answer all the time was a singing veterinarian. And now I realized I'm like, I could not be a veterinarian because I cannot, I love when animals are fine and good. Anything else after that, I do not want to see an animal hurt. I don't, I can't do it. Can't do it. I get so upset. So it's like, obviously the veterinarian part was out of the question. Um, but I just, it wasn't just like, Oh yeah, I want to be a singer. Like I really, that was my I just had this thing in me and I'm so blessed to have that feeling of like, this is my purpose and I'm going to make it work no matter what anyone tells me. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, and none of my family does music like that. They were all kind of like, uh, okay, like that's what you need to do. They were very supportive. Um, but they just, even to this day, they're like, I don't understand what goes into like a writing session. And I'm just like, honestly, it's really hard to explain because it's just like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, I just knew from day one, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm not taking no for an answer. Mm. And you have a dog next to you. Speaking of being a veterinarian. I do. This is beans. He's a real good guy. How many dogs do you have? Just one. I only have one. Hmm. He's my, he's my golden child. Um, also, I travel so much that it's really hard to have multiple dogs. Mm. And you said you do music different than your the rest of your family. So are you in a musical family? No, my family doesn't do music at all. Oh. Yeah, that, they literally, <laughs> like, that's why they were like, wait, uh, we don't know. Because I remember initially asking for my first piano when I was, like, seven. My parents were like, okay, like, because they were always so supportive of my hobbies. Like, I was a soccer player, I, all the things. And they always let me try everything. And then they were also awesome if they're like, like, volleyball. Should never let me touch a volleyball, ever. And they were very, like, we tried, maybe we shouldn't do it. They were awesome. Um, <laughs> but music was the one thing I remember hearing a commercial on Christmas morning when I got the piano. And I played it right back. Like, I, and that was the thing was my parents were like, oh okay, this is different. Um, this is strange. And they just let me like anything that I could get my hands on musically. Like I was in every theater thing, every church play, anything you could think of. And they just supported me. They were great. Hmm. Really now, great. Where's, the, where's the most unusual place you ever got inspiration for a song as a songwriter? 
Oh, that's a crazy question. Um, I will say, so I guess it's not that strange. No, okay, I know. There was a time that I was in an airport bar and I was sitting there and this, cause I was like, I was going through a breakup. I'm all, I feel like I'm always going through a breakup. Um, <laughs> truly something, the breakup chronicles of Shaylin. Um, but I, I was sitting there and this lady started giving me all of this advice and I have this title, I still haven't used it, but it's like airport advice. Cause it was just like, I feel like she was going through it. And, she, and then I also have this title from her that's like, um, you're going to, uh, I'm going to miss you, but you're going to miss me more. And I was like, you're freaking right. And I was like, I'm going to write that. I don't know what it means. She's like, I want 10%. I was like, I got you. <laughs> so if I ever use that, I'm for sure getting her percentage, but I wrote her <laughs> name down. I mean, I'm pretty sure her name was G Georgia. Ge I remember it exactly. It was at the national airport. And we had a we had a shot of Jack Daniels together, so it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Daniels takes care of a lot of heartbreak. You know, man. if if all else fails, Jack. You know? It's always Jack. JD, we love him. good guy. Good we're guy. talking to Shaylin, who's got some new music out, which we're going to hear. If you don't mind doing a song for us, we'd like to hear you perform something. I got you. This is my newest song, and it is called "Do It Right the First Time." Here's "Do It Right the First Time." Shaylin on Border Crossings. <laughs> Got a Sunday phone call from my mom Swear she always knows when something's wrong Yeah, we looked good on paper Turns out I'm just a heartbreaker Tell me what's the secret When you find love, how do you keep it? I don't wanna settle or end up alone Said I'm no expert, but here's what I know Crossings. She's Shaylin and or Shay, and that is do it right the first time. So, you know, obviously you're talking about relationships when that song was inspired. Yes. <laughs> I always talk about relationships. Um, that was a crazy one because I it's really inspired from my grandpa. I uh last year I it was so interesting because it was one of those relationships. I'd never in my life been with the person. I was like, oh, I might marry this person. That was the first time for me. So the breakup obviously was the worst. Like there was really no closure to it. And I was so lost. And I called my mom and I was like, I, 
what is the secret? And she was like, honestly, Shay, not really the person to call since your dad and I aren't together. I was like, you prove a valid point. <laughs> um, so she's like, you should call your grandparents who have been married for 75 years. They're both 95, turning 96, um, and they're both still here. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Thank you. They're freaking amazing. And I flew to see them in South Carolina last year and sat down. I was like, hey, well, like, what is the key? And my Mimi was like, listen, you got to laugh at everything because in hindsight, nothing is that serious. And then my papa was like, you got to try your best, love as hard as you can and try to do it right the first time. But if you get it wrong, that's okay because everything happens for a reason. And I was like, why have I not gone to you guys the majority of my freaking 20s? I could have saved myself a whole lot of trouble. I was like, you guys have had 96 years of experience. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> um, but I had that title and then I got, it was so interesting because... Well, I had a form of that title that I wrote down um, about all of those points. And I was in a session a year later, almost to the day. And there was this guy that was, his name's Sean and he's wonderful. And he was like, I have this concept of like, do it right the first time. Cause my dad told me like, go cut the grass, do it right the first time. So you don't have to do it again. And I was like, oh my God, I almost have a very similar title for my grandpa. And all of a sudden it was like, I, like I get chills thinking about it because it was the stars aligned, everything happened and we wrote it and now it's coming out. It like went insane on TikTok and everyone was like, I want to use this for my wedding song. I was like, you can use it for the wedding I didn't have. So this is great. <laughs> <laughs> it, must, it must blow your mind when you get millions of, uh, of streams or views you know, it's just two million, three million. I don't know, certain songs you put out. It's just, those are huge numbers. Honestly, like it's one of the, cause I've been doing music my whole life, um, professionally, especially last like a couple of years I've put out songs, was on a major label. And like, I prayed to see some of the numbers I'm having, to see some of the opportunities, playlisting, and then like even TikTok to just have a video like matter or like people listening. Um, and it's really cool. Cause like, I wasn't even really planning for this to be my next single. And I threw it up uh, with the video of my grandpa listening to it. And it went crazy. And I was like, well, you guys just decided what I'm putting out next. And I think that's such a beautiful thing to also, like instead of a and R's choosing it now, like you actually get to have an audience choose it for you. And I think that's such a beautiful thing. Um, so yeah, it is kind of crazy that like, these are just from my heart. These are from my journal. I put them out hoping that people resonate with them. And when they do like that, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, that was really freaking cool. I don't think that feeling will ever get old. Are you planning to put out an album? Oh, yes. We're working on that right now. Um, it'll definitely be a few more singles till like mid-year. But by the end of the year, I'm hoping to put out my first official album. It'll be my first album in my entire career. So that's really cool. Yes, yes. And what title? What might we expect or what are the options? What are the choices? It's a very good question. Um, depends on how many more breakups I go through. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that. You're beautiful. What, what's oh, up? Like, it must be you. I, must be I'm you. honestly starting to wonder if I am the problem because I'm like. No, no, no. I'm saying you must be the one saying it's over. <laughs> you would think. It's more just my choice. I am starting to see a pattern of the choices of men I choose because. Uh -oh. I'm like, you know what? They all have a, a certain theme and it's not good. Um, so I'm going to start, I got to like branch out from this, <laughs> this, uh, this bad boy phase. Cause I, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. <laughs> no, you were, you were telling me about names for the album. Okay. So names for the album. I'm going to hold you. I'm not letting you off the hook that easy. See? <laughs> it's so interesting. Cause it's like, when I think about it, that's such a crazy thing to title an entire body of work. Mm -hmm. I have thought about it a few times now. And <laughs> the one I really, it always comes back as like life lessons, <laughs> really, truly. Um, I don't know if it would be exactly that or like chapters, something. I haven't figured out an entire title, but I also might use one of the track titles from the out like from the actual one of the singles mm -hmm. um i just haven't decided what that is yet but it's definitely gonna the best way to portray life lessons that's mm -hmm. gonna be the theme yeah that's a great <laughs> album title life lessons or Heartbreak chronicles it, maybe call it airport bar and then you'll get a call from that woman that's wanting her 10 you know 
watch. I'm gonna be like, listen, this, you you inspire the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> Shailen is our guest. She's at home in uh, Nashville. Yes, and, sir. And uh, we are. I'm enjoying the three clocks behind you. Is there a significance why they're not in sync? Is there? Is that was that purposely or? They don't even work. Um, to they be don't honest, work. Okay. They it's, don't it's, even. Perpetually 10 minutes after 10. It was so funny because when I tried to put batteries in them, it made them significantly heavier. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. So here they are. <laughs> here they are. I love it. I love it. Would you do another song for us? Absolutely. What's this, the next song? So this next song is called What If I Don't? And it is a, it is a breakup song. Um, but it is my, the first single I put out on my country project. So I hope you guys enjoy. What if I don't? Here's Shaylin on Border Crossings. Mm -hmm. Why am I still buying makeup? That's why the pool. Yeah. Everybody goes to breakups. I know they do, but not with you. Yeah, I've been thinking about you every day Getting drunk and calling you so late All this while you was just a phase up with a little time to be okay What if I'm not as strong as I think? What if in two years I still can't sleep? What if I meet somebody new And never be kiss feels like I'm cheating on you? Crossing Shaylin, and uh, that is called What If I Don't, which is the first country song that you've put out. And so let's talk about the change. You were a pop singer. Now you've decided to, to go to country, which is the opposite direction of Taylor Swift. But why did you make that transition? What, what was it about country that attracted you? You know, my whole life, I grew up on, I grew up singing in church and on country music. I'm a Southern girl. Um, and that was all I listened to. I was listening to anything from I truly remember Whiskey Lullaby being a significant thing, Stay by Sugarland, um, but Brad Paisley, Taylor Swift, George Strait, um, Brooks and Dunn, like all of those my parents would play. And I, then I went to my first country concert. In fact, I think it was Brad Paisley. And I just remember I was like, wow, this is a really cool crowd, very different than any other concert that I'd been to. Because they're just so involved. They love it. They're just there for a good time. Like country fans are epic. 
Um, and I, it was so funny because then I fell into this world of pop music. I truly loved pop music. I went out to LA um, and I pursued it for the last 10 years. And it was so interesting to see the evolution of pop music change over time. And last year I put out an EP and I just, I didn't feel the love I had for pop music anymore. I was kind of at rock bottom. I had certain people around me telling me like, you're never going to work. It's never going to happen. Like throw in the towel. And I was like, okay. And then like, it was the first time I truly in my entire life felt defeated. Cause most of the time I'm like, no, I'm going to make this work. And I had a friend who is now my manager. He was like, you know, you should come out to Nashville. Cause I'd never been to Nashville at all previous to this. And he was like, you should just try to come write country music because in all of your pop songs, there are all these country melodies that you're just boxing in with pop lyrics. And I was like, okay. And then like, I had people that were like, well, you need to go there and just write for people. Don't say you're an artist. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, cause I also write for other people. Like it wasn't a big deal. And it was crazy. It was my very first session at 9 a.m. in the morning. First time I'd ever written at 9 a.m. in my life because LA, Sessions work very different. You don't start till like two or three in the afternoon. Um, I was running on no sleep and I worked with Seth Ennis, Lindsey Rhymes, and Phil Barton. And What If I Don't was the first song to, I, I ever wrote in Nashville. Um, and I just remember after leaving that session, I was like, first of all, I'm not very precious with songs. And I was like, I can't, no one else can sing that. Like, that's my, that's mine. Second of all, I loved the process. I loved the people. That entire week, I wrote some of the best music of my life. I love the feel of Nashville. So many talented people here. And I, it clicked. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to be here. Like, I have to be doing country music. Um, and my whole life, everyone was like, you're crazy if you don't do country music. I was like, no, I'm going to do pop music. So it just kind of, it was an interesting feeling inside. I went back. Um, I told everyone, I was like, listen, I'm switching over. I'm going to make the, the shift because I fell in love with music again. And mm -hmm. I felt like my heart and my soul were in it again. I love the process. I loved that my singing the stories and writing the stories in country verse pop. It's a very different way of writing lyrics. And I truly, I, I, it clicked for me. I was like, oh my gosh, like all of the things that I learned in LA, I needed to learn them and experience them. And now it's time to tell these stories in a different way. Uh, so I went back, I turned my life upside down. I got off my label, uh, parted ways with my old team and my lease was up. I happened to be putting out What If I Don't as my first song in July of 2022. And I don't find it coincidental that my lease was up on July 31st. And I had to give them a notice. And I was like, maybe I could do both places. I was so scared to go because I didn't really know anyone. And I was like, no, I think I gotta, I can't be one foot in, one foot out. So August 1st, I packed up my bags and I moved to Nashville. Wow. Destiny. Yeah. It was meant to be, I guess. It was meant to be. And timing is everything. I, I firmly believe that. I don't feel like there's any coincidences in this mm. whole journey. And you said that songwriting is different for country music than pop music. How so? Honestly, the storytelling and the twist, because <laughs> um, people love the twist in country music. If, I, it took me a second to really understand like the flips on songs. Uh, pop music, I feel like is very on the nose um, and you don't have to really, like you have to kind of think outside the box for country music. You have to think about like, what's the, like when that payoff happens and you're like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Whereas pop music is very like, you see it coming. You really know what's gonna, you know the end line of each chorus. Like you, mm -hmm. you can predict it. And country music, you can't sometimes. And I kind of, love that like and that's the that's the one thing I enjoy in the comments is seeing they're like oh my gosh I wasn't expecting the twist I'm like yes. so like <laughs> it's such a good feeling <laughs> Shaylin is our guest and she's got some new music out and here we are in a brand new year 2023 and so the plan is touring is that on the schedule oh it is oh it is um definitely a lot of shows this year are the main focus because that's just where I thrive Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing I can announce quite yet. Oh, come on. Just between you and I. I'm, I'm trying to think what's a good, I know I have one in April. Mm -hmm. I have an Ohio date. I have Detroit and I have, I think it's Milwaukee. Fantastic. Those are three for sure. But working on some other things that, like I said, those I for sure, I'm like, those are up in the air. So I can't confirm those, um, but all very exciting. All that you'll definitely be seeing me on the road a lot this year. 
Would you do another song for us? Absolutely. Um, this is my latest single I put out called Root. Actually, I don't know when this, uh, I just put this single out, but then Do It Right the First Time will have come out after this. Um, so this is Roots. This is my last single that I put out, and it's all about going back to your roots. All right, here's Shaylin with Roots on Border Crossings. <laughs> And that was Roots. That's from Shaylin, who is our guest right now. And uh, the album is coming out at what point in the year? Do you know? Definitely the second half of the year. The second half of the year. So it'll be right around the holidays. I think so. Or a little bit before that. Um, probably August, September area. Mm -hmm. And if somebody came to you and said, Shaylin, you can only pick writing or singing, songwriting or singing. What is the pick? What's the oh, choice? My that's a that's a crazy question. Uh, oh gosh, I've never been asked this question. This is a great question. I'm gonna have to say ooh, it doesn't, it? right though, but I, I'm gonna have to say singing. Oh, you sound like you're gonna say songwriting. I, <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know because one is equally like they're both so equally important. Wow. So singing is your favorite part of this whole business. Oh yeah, because to sing the songs that you write and to sing anybody's songs, like if I connect with somebody's songs and do like cover them, like, I don't know, it's a feeling that I just, I feel so like ugh, afterwards, like it's mm -hmm. just, I get the same feeling from songwriting, but if I, if I had to choose that, I would sing the songs. Mm -hmm. How were you, I mean, so you were trained on the religious music. Um, so that was kind of where you got your chops was singing in church. 
Yeah. A church is a crazy place to learn how to sing. And I would go all around to different churches. And I just, I loved I, to see the worship part of church is my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing. Well, what Especially are your uh, social media sites? So our, our audience, oh, your fans around the world, because we're on in a hundred countries, if they want to find out what's going on with Shaylin, where do they go? You can find me on Instagram at Shaylin Official, uh, TikTok, Shaylin Music, and Twitter at Shaylin. And then if you're looking for my music, Apple, Spotify, any music platform, I'm on there is Shaylin. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. I mean, I love your music. It sounds great. I'm looking forward to the album. When you put the album out, if you come to DC, since you have family here, you know, come and visit us in our studios. We'd love to I have you. I absolutely will. Don't tempt me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being on the show. Before I let you go, I want to give you a chance to send a shout out to the troops who are also tuned in around the world. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for your service. Um, thank you. My family thanks you. I thank you for everything you guys do. Um, mwah, I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Shaylin. Love your music. Don't forget, check her out, Shaylin. The new album is coming up sometime at the end of uh, the year, maybe before the holidays. My name is Larry London. Border Crossings is seen right here on VOA TV.